Hello everyone, welcome back to another Adobe Photoshop tutorial. In this one, I'm in Photoshop 2020, the latest release. And guys, I'm going to show you glass morphism. In fact, here is an example of what we're going to do. We're going to make it a little different, but this is the basic effect. Essentially, you use a frosted glass effect with a background blur. We're making frosted glass is really what we're doing. Uh, and you'll notice here that it gives it a bit of a multi-layered look. So they don't look like it's all one layer. It looks like this glass is on top of the background. We're using bright colors and a crazy background like this just to show the effect a little more. Um, also, the background does sort of bleed through into the glass, which is what you would expect. Uh, glass morphism is very popular in the UI world right now, so let's do it. We're doing it in Photoshop, and let's go step by step. First step, file new in Photoshop, and we're going to create a document. I'm going to create a 1920 by 1080 pixel document just like this. Hit create, bang, we've got a document, it's blank, it's got a white background, we're rolling. The second step, and this is an important one, is you want to go to Google or whatever and you want to get a background. Now, I'm going to put this background in the link in the description, but this is the one I selected because it's a nice cool background and it's bright and it really shows the effect off. So, you want to place that background inside Photoshop. So, I'm going to go to my Finder window. I'm going to, it's in my pictures, and I am going to drag and drop it or place it in there. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK so it's placed. You're going to notice here, first off, that it is not the same size as the back, as the image, or pardon me, the original background. So, I'm just going to go ahead and increase the size, something like this, just so that it kind of fits and it looks all good. How does that look? Something like that? OK, cool. And then I'm going to hit enter, and that is placing the object. So we've got a background now. The next step, if you're following along, is we're going to duplicate the layer. You can do that by hitting Control J or Command J on a Mac, or you can just drag and drop it on top of this plus sign right here. That means we've got a second layer. We are going to rename this layer. So I'm going to double click on the name here, right here, and I'm going to name this Blur. Uh, we don't need it all capital. All right name it blur now the next step and make sure you're still selected on the top layer or the blur layer we want to go to filter we want to go to blur and we're gonna go to Gaussian blur alright blur Gaussian blur right there now boom that is a hell of a blur so maybe that might be a little bit too much so let's take it down to say what do you think something like something like that again guys this is Let's go with 12 pixels. It doesn't really matter uh, because I'm just showing you the effect. But uh, you can, of course, season this to your taste. And, of course, because it's Photoshop, you can go in and make changes when you're done if you don't like the end effect. So we've added in a blur. The next step is we're going to create a rectangle. Now I'm going to go to the rectangle button over here. It's U. I'm going to left-click on it once so it's selected. And then I'm just going to left-click on the uh, canvas right here. And when I do that, it allows me to create a rectangle of whatever proportions I want. I'm going to go 600 pixels by 300 pixels. You can, of course, do whatever you want, but this is the size that I think will work good for this demonstration. And bang, we've got a rectangle. It did not place it in the center. That's okay. I'm actually going to move it over to the left here. And you're going to notice here that I've hovered it so that when you see that purple in the middle, that means it's centered. Uh, pardon me. Yeah, it's on. The, it's centered. It's just not centered um, this way. It's centered. What the hell is that? Vertical or horizontal? Whatever. It's centered. We'll go with that. All right. So, of course, you can make your rectangle the size you feel fit. The next step here is you want to go to your properties panel. If you don't have it open, make sure there's a check mark beside properties. I'm going to left click on it and it's going to open properties for me. So here's where it is for me. It might be up in the top right for you, depending on uh, what your Photoshop is set up to do. But you're going to see here, we're going to go in here and we're going to make a couple of changes. Uh, the first one is we're going to round the corners. This is an important one. Right down here, this is how you round corners. So I'm going to go ahead and click this to 50 pixels. And then I'm going to hit tab and it made all of them 50 pixels. And when you look at the uh, rectangle, it now has rounded corners, which is what we want. All right, guys, we are rolling. The fill color, I will note at this point in time, doesn't really matter. Um, so let's just keep rolling. The next step is you want to take this rectangle. Uh, I haven't renamed it. I'm going to name it um, 
you. Well, rectangle's pretty bloody good. Let's go with rectangle. I am going to move this now underneath the blur layer, and it is going to disappear, and for those of you that are new to Photoshop, this could cause some panic. Do not panic. I got you covered. You now want to click on the blur layer, the top layer, and, you go, and you're going to want to either right-click on it, and down, 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 you're going to see, where is it? Uh, where is it? We are going to basically create a clipping mask. I just can't really read all that well, so we want to create clipping mask. So right there, create clipping mask. Bang. Now we've got a clipping mask. Now the rectangle, it, you can barely see it, but it's there, right? We need to make some changes to it, but if I close that off, it's right there. When I turn it on and off, well, it's barely visible, but that's okay, guys. So we've created the clipping mask. Now we're going to work on the shape. So I'm going to make sure that I'm selected on the rectangle, and let's get to work. We're going to start adding in some effects. So I'm going to double-click on the layer. Now, don't double-click here or on the name. Double-click over here when you're off of the name. Double clicking it is going to give us the layer style and the blending options and all that good stuff here. So let's get right into this. All right, so the first one is we are going to create an inner glow on this. So I'm going to left click on inner glow, and right away by doing that, it you'll see that it's lit up a little bit, and it has a nice cool little outside white edge. Now, I just did this, so my settings are kind of pretty close to where I want them to be. So if you are following along with me, an opacity of 15% is what I chose. But as I dial this up, you're going to see that the edges get brighter and brighter. So depending on the effect and how subtle you want it to be, that's the number you're going to want to go with. You'll also see here that I've got the blending mode set to normal. A lot of times it automatically sets to multiply or screen or some such nonsense. Set it to normal for this case. The choke, I've got it 16%, but as I move it up, you'll see on the edges here, it goes in and out as you, as as it does. So let's go to, let's say, yeah, let's go with 16%. Let's say, yeah, it was pretty good there. And the size, of course, seasoned as to how you see fit. You can have no size, or you can have a very, very, very uh, blended side effect right there. So, oh, that's my phone beeping. Hang on. Of course, they call while I'm doing a tutorial. Of course, that's my parole officer. We'll just ignore him. All right. Uh, all right, that's gone and done. Now, we've got the inner glow going on, and I see you guys can probably tell where this is going. We're now going to go and select, uh, what's the next one on my list here? We're going to change it to, uh, have we done it to cover overlay? No, no, we have not yet. Okay, so inner glow set up. We're going to go to stroke. Guys, sorry, that phone call threw me off a little bit here. Forgive me for that. Uh, we're going to select stroke, and we're going to create a small stroke. I've got it at one pixel. And I've got the opacity drop to 50%. Let's increase the size and let's increase the opacity so you can see what's happening. I'm dialing it back to about 50. This is what it's going to work for me. And I've got that down to about one, maybe two pixels. I'm going to go with one pixels because this is a very subtle effect. So we've gone ahead, we've changed the stroke, we've added in, pardon me, we've added in the stroke. It's at 50% opacity. Off we go. The next, we want to go to color overlay. Left click on color overlay. And bang, it applied another effect to it. Just a basic white effect on top of it. If we click on cover overlay, pardon me, you're going to notice that the blend mode is set to normal and the opacity is set to 10%. That has no opacity, obviously, 100%. So when we when we up it to 10%, eh, let's go with 10%, we're getting the frosted glass look here. We're just giving it a little bit more seasoning. 10% eh, works. Okay, so you see where we're going with this? Good. We've gone to... 10%, click on cover overlay. The last one is click on drop shadow right here. And this this one is not necessary, but I, I feel that it adds a little bit more. Um, I have set it to an opacity of 16%, but if you want to go subtler to like this type of look, you can go for it. Uh, you can go for the really, really hard look so that it looks like you've got a lot of space and it's like a layer that's kind of hovering in the air, but uh, again, I've gone with 16%, but again, season it to your taste. Distance 10 pixels for me. I'm going to go 10 pixels and leaves it a little bit. Yeah, it looks about right. Uh, spread 22%, size 13 pixels. I'm going to spread the, yeah, let's go with 13 pixels. Again, guys, these are total options for you. You can season this to your taste. We're just going for the look. Guys, 
that is pretty much it for the glass morphism effect. If you like this tutorial, remember to subscribe, remember to thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you think of this. If you have any questions or concerns, you need me to do something for you, I'll do it. And I'll be back soon with some more chops.